Hello and welcome back once again to the Vertex Cash Class. If all goes well, this could potentially be our last video in the Vertex Cash Class system. Meaning that in this video, we're not going to be spending much time inside this particular class. We're going to be doing a little bit of integrating, as I said at the end of the last video, where we're going to do some integration with the terrain manager and the terrain patch. And then, of course, we need to make sure everything is jamming along smoothly. And if not, then we may end up with a few more videos where we do some troubleshooting. <laughs> right. And, you know, how often does things never always, always. Work out for me? <laughs> yep. All right, I'm going to do one last thing here because when I was creating this purge thread, I wasn't quite sure if we we're going to be able to make it read only or not. And we can, so I'm going to make it read only. Okay. So go ahead and do that. Change its name, purge, and rename everything. Okay, good. Right now we have two unused fields, size and max height, but we also have an M implemented our elevation color yet. Right. So I'm going to leave those for now. I do know that they do nothing, so... I expect that, so we're just going to leave it for now, though. All right, so now we have to deal with our terrain patch because we would like to be able to use this. But before we do anything else too much, what I do want to do is inside of these three methods, because these are pretty much the heart of things, which is our setup mesh, get vertex data, and our setup mesh details, we're going or well actually I moved that code out but we're going to be messing around with these guys but the other one is going to be inside of train mesh because I forgot we moved it back is inside of update recalculate normals I don't want normals calculated here otherwise all that trouble we went through for recalculating normals and tangents will go to waste so we'll get rid of that and then I want to go into Unity, and I want to see what this looks like before we start messing around with stuff. So, as we can see, everything is really dark. Mm -hmm. So, no normal information. So, now we've got a baseline of what it looks like now. We can see if what we're doing is having any effect. So, inside of Train Patch, we need to have another list in here. Right now, we've got some properties that are fairly generic, but we need another public property. This is going to be a public list. Well, good to see ReSharper is working with me. List, generic. This will be of type vertex. This will be our vertices. What we're going to do is we're going to have a list of the vertices that are associated with each patch. So this will have a getter and a private set. So we've got that. Inside of our constructor, let's see, how do I want to do this? Let's go here and here. So we've only got the one constructor now which varies from mine, which is why I was trying to figure out where I moved it to. We've got uh, vertices equals new vertex list. So basically we're going to initialize that list. And inside of get vertex data, right now we're pulling our height information from here and we're using get key to get our key. We need an intermediate step here as well which will be to get our vertex information. To do this, we're going to say vertices.add, and we're going to add vertex cache instance key. So instead of just getting the height, we're going to retrieve the entire bit of information into our vertice list. So then I can get rid of this height, which was temporary. And I can call here, this will be vertices sub i dot 
height. So this will give us our height information. At least I think it will. So let's go test and see if we still have some height information. And yes, we still have height information. Excellent. So that part is working. Now, if we jump back over to here, let's go down to, let's see, that takes care of this one. We've got get vertex cat uh, is taken care of. Now we need to set up mesh details. Now, what I want to, how I want this to work is basically get vertex data is going to get the information for each one of our vertices. After we've loaded in all the vertices for the entire mesh, what I want to do is calculate the normals and tangents for the vertices in our mesh. So I'm waiting until after the loops have gone through and created all of that or loaded all that information before I calculate because we need all the information loaded so it can calculate correctly across all of the vertices including the neighbors along the outside edge of our mesh otherwise we would get seams so in setup mesh details because get vertice, or get vertex data has already run its course I know that all the vertice information that I need to calculate normals and tangents correctly is there it's at this point that I will call the vertex cache dot calculate values and then it just takes a list of verts which I happen to have right here called vertices so I pass that in that should calculate all my information now that's not going to do us any good until we implement this stuff so we can finally uncomment this and get rid of these placeholders because we've now calculated out the normals and tangents. So from here, I can call on vertices sub i, grab the normal at that location. I can do vertices sub i, grab the tangent at that location. And I'm going to co or comment out the color because we haven't done anything with it yet. It's still not being used. So I'll get rid of that for now. So if I jump back in and I hit play, cross my fingers and hope because I really <laughs> don't want to do a lot of troubleshooting, that we get something. And we don't. Well, sort of. So we're getting a lot of errors here which is slowing us down greatly, which means I've got numbering wrong somewhere. So I'm going to have to sort out why I'm getting numbers wrong. So, But I do get some information, which is nice. So we'll have to figure that one out. So easiest way to sort that out is not by opening Windows Explorer. Now, uh, at any point when troubleshooting, if you want, I can pause things. No, this part I do really want to show. Um, okay, good. Mostly because I want to check my vertex count, vertex spacing, which is fine there. I want to go into my interest range. And I definitely don't want that many there. I want to bring down our number so we're bringing in uh, less patches at a given time. Because when we're doing all those patches, I'm getting all these errors. It's taking mm -hmm. a very long time for it to process. So if I drop in just a single set, then it's not quite so bad. But then I've got a set of numbers that I can look at and see what's going on. It's just saying these errors at these locations. So I'm getting minus 16 plus 16. Minus 16, so... Wow, you're flipping your numbers, by the way. That's 16 minus 16. <laughs> yeah, that's what I meant. I know, Dyslexia. I know. Dyslexia. <laughs> but uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So I've got 14 of those numbers. It's kind of a weird number. So now I've got to process and figure out what's going on. 
Now, one of the things that I found for troubleshooting this particular problem is that if we go into code inside of Vertex Cache and we go to Add, and right before we return to Vertex, if we make a var s equals game object dot create primitive primitive type dot sphere and then I set that sphere's location to be the vertex location this sometimes helps try to figure out what's missing or get the positional information so we can try to figure out what's going on which is another reason we drop the number way sure. down sure because you don't want to be draw drawing a whole bunch of these all right so we can see what's going on right here so i've got all of these being drawn but apparently i'm missing some so which one would this be technically that would be our center of that point So if I go look at our add neighbors, that should be this one. And because I'm using negative spacing twice instead of negative spacing followed by a positive spacing, my number is going to be shifted. Let's see if that makes a difference. Hey! Now I've got all of my spots, and I've got no missing vertices. Just a handy little trick that I had to develop. Yeah, for sure. So, And then once you've got that sorted, definitely comment this code out before you go back and do the big test. <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, you might be there for a little while. All right, let's give this a shot and see what happens. All right, now, let's go ahead and zoom around, particularly to the areas where we're having problems before. And now if I select my material and we drop the textures on them so we don't have them anymore, we can see that we don't have the seams. Very nice. And our normals are fairly clean. We can still see some of the the uh, triangulation, but there's not a whole lot we can get uh, around that. So, But it is smoothed out quite nicely, and we can check by putting our normal map back in that our tangents are also calculating without seams. Very nice, very nice. Now I can put it all back in. So that part seems to be working. All right, so that takes care of our train patch. But we're not done, because now we're going to learn how to make julienne fries. Oh, sorry, my bad, wrong infomercial. Yeah. <laughs> sorry. All right. Um, what did I say we were going to do after that? I think train manager or That's correct. Uh, yep. All right, so well, I think you said it. I didn't say anything. Managers. I've been I've been quiet. All right. Now, inside of Train Manager, there's not a whole lot, but luckily we left this little placeholder right here a while ago. It says, "Hey, do some stuff with Vertex Cache." The stuff that we need to do with Vertex Cache is not too much. I think there's only two things that we really need to do with it, which is going to be stuff and things. So once we get those nailed out, we're done. But, uh, all right, now let's do some stuff. Vertex cache dot release hold. We want to make sure that we release the hold on anything that happens to be there. So how are we going to release the hold? Uh, or what are we going to release the hold on? We're going to be releasing the hold on patches, particularly the patches that are at the uh, element 
position. So we're going to look up the key. And then we're going to grab the vertices from that um, that patch that lives at that location. That will release the hold from there. The next step is going to be calling the vertex cache dot remove. No. Wow. Really? No. So remove and again once a list and it just so happens it's the same list. So we just paste the same list there. So that will take care of dealing with our train manager. But how do we know it's working? Now let's jump back into train demo. Inside of here where we've got you know some information here. Let's go ahead and do text plus equals and this time we'll do vertex uh, cache uh, size and then from here we'll ask the vertex cache how big are you and let us know please um, hold on for a jump out of there. Go ahead and put a uh, new line. No, oh, I like it this way. Okay. It, it, it's, you know, <laughs> creative. Gotcha. Uh, picky, picky, picky. All right, so let's see what's happening. So we jump in, and as train patches are loading, our vertex cache starts screaming up. So, but it's staying steady until I do something like turn. Now I start adding more patches and my vertex cache starts climbing. But then I'll get to a point eventually where I've loaded in everything in the visible area. So now you got to remember we've got two areas or ranges. We have an interest range, which is everything that's going to be loaded in memory if I stand in this particular spot and I look every which way I possibly can. So that's my interest area. But there's a hold area which is going to hold in more information than I can possibly see. So if I run one way and then turn around and run another way, it's not constantly loading in that information and dropping it. So let's jump speed up to say 50. So if I start running we'll see that my vertex cache size is going to increase. But there's going to be a cap to it that at some point we're going to roughly maintain the same number of vertices no matter how far we run. There will be, of course, that slow leak that I was mentioning. So I'll get to a point where we're going to stable out, and it looks like we're stabling at about 4,200 or sorry, uh, 42,000, 43,000 right in there. Mm -hmm. But as I'm moving, the numbers are fluctuating a little bit here, a little bit there. If you were to continue to run in a set direction for a very long time, you would find that that number would steadily increase a little at a time. The number that it would increase by, I think, works out to be about 16 vertices at this, at this vertex count because you're talking about the neighbor, uh, neighboring vertices that just aren't getting deleted. But if you were to sit there and let it run for 15 minutes, we'd eventually get that information possibly dropping off. Now, to test that part, what I want to do is to see if our editor, or when we, what am I thinking? We already know it's working. Because uh, when I'm running it, we wouldn't remove any of those patches. That's right. Because Or the vertices would never get removed if the thread wasn't already running. Because all we're doing inside of the game is flagging stuff. It's that thread that's responsible for going in and removing those. We're just saying, hey, whenever you run, delete a thousand of, of the ones that are marked as destroy me. And it's doing that. Otherwise, this number would keep growing and it would never go back or it would never go down. 
and I'm trying to see if I can catch it. We're going to watch it. So you can see it after I stop moving about a half second a- afterwards, it drops a little bit. I don't know if you guys are catching that on the pickup or if you can see it on the feed as well. Yeah, there it goes. So it's operating at that uh, increment. Another thing that's kind of fun, see if I can bring this up, is the profiler. I've actually found a decent use for this thing. Again, pro-only feature. <laughs> yes, this is a pro-only feature. So you may not be able to have it. Well, you if see you the have garbage. standard, you don't have it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you don't have it. But you can see the garbage collector picking up at certain points. Let's see. This is the render. Is this the garbage collector or is this going no, to be? No, the garbage collector is going to be your dark red or your bright red. What one is this one? This one is camera render. Okay, this is just something else. This is they're calling. Um, oh, unpause. What do I want? This is uh, going to be our yeah, game manager update. So these are where it's creating patches. What I'm trying to do is see if I can't catch the uh, the spike for the uh, game manager update. No, that's not it. What I'm looking for is the spike that happens about every half second from the the uh, purge operation. But with these settings, I may not be able to catch it because I'm not, I don't have enough going through it at any given time with these numbers. But what you would find is a uh, with large ones, a fairly healthy spike that happened. And you got to look, these numbers are incredibly small right now. We're talking, you know, four millisecond times mm-hmm. as opposed to the numbers I would see when I was doing uh, large sweeps with um, absolutely huge worlds were a 10, uh, a 10 frame per second drop. So it would drop all the way down to 10 frames before it would continue on. So let's see, can I force something like that? Let's try, oh, as I'm changing settings on my other project, let's see what happens. And what's the worst that could happen? I just blow up. Yeah, see, no big deal. I am used to Unity exploding. But now we're getting to the realm where there's so much we're we're incurring a big penalty for construction of patches. Mm-hmm. As you can see with the giant red, with me running at about three frames a second right now. But this is where you hit that limitation where there's just too much for this system to handle. Right. So we're... Uh, saturated. I mean, look at our vertex count. We're up to about a hundred thousand vertices here, and as I pan around, it's increasing. And yeah, what we see on the screen looks pretty much the same. Yep. I mean, I well, know it's going that, off further, but I'm just saying that. Yeah, that's going to be because our draw. We're at about our draw distance yep. limit. So, well, got a bit more, but. It's just an incredible penalty. Even when we're not running around, we're 37 frames a second. Oof. Yeah. So we're basically at the limit of what my computer can handle in this configuration, which is a good exp- or a good demonstration of why we are fighting so hard with balancing small patches with lo- against large patches. How many small patches could we get compared to how many large patches we could get? And we just found that the you know mid size, the fifty patch with a spacing of four, yielded just the best performance in just about every comparison we've done. Right. So that's why we ended up with this, as opposed to trying to make you know eight. Well, what is this? This is 
eight mall forty one so that works out to forty that's eighty one times eighty one patches in the interest range mm-hmm. so we're talking trying to keep track of eighty one times eighty one we're going through six thousand five hundred sixty one patches that has to be iterated through every single time plus all the vertices. So every loop through is trying to go through 114,000 plus vertices, which just yields in slowdown. Plus in this particular case where we're generating all this information in real time, it's just an incredible bottleneck. Right. So, but I just wanted to, uh, now that we've got the full system implemented, show what happens when we push the system beyond its capability. So let me ask you this. So now that the Vertex cache is working, mm-hmm. where do you think we're going to go from here? Because um, we, least... we can skip out on the, the, sculpting um, stuff. the sculpting stuff for now to continue working on the, the full pipeline that we demonstrated back at the very beginning of this session. Well, if we, if we hold off on the sculpting stuff, basically skip the – Dealing with the data storage system, Mm -hmm. basically the persistent stuff. If we hold off on the persistent stuff because that gets into a highly technical area. Mm -hmm. So if if we don't worry about that, we can skip the sculpting for now. We can also skip um, recreating a new train generator that populates that sculpting system, which means we can look at the exporting pipeline, Mm -hmm. which gets into how to create – prefabs, how to write an OBJ exporter, how to write an extension that will create an asset bundle for you okay, and go through that whole process. And then that once we got that process done, that opens up the possibility of looking at writing the uh, train viewer, which is the big program that we demonstrated at the beginning of this session. Yeah, that's awesome. I I uh, vote for doing it that way because these other systems, while persistence is important and, uh, and sculpting is important, the, the main elements that we need are in place right now to continue with getting the entire pipeline in and then coming back. And then we can go ahead and get sculpting and persistence both in place and, and tied into the system. But at that point, when we do, those, do tie those in, we'll be able to see that – the manipulations done with sculpting and the saving back to the persistence system, the whole pipeline will continue to work all the way through to the viewer, and we can see our sculpting results, boom, over in the viewer. Right. So I say we, we just go ahead and go with continuing with the big picture and then come back with some of these smaller systems since not having them at the moment slows us up in no way. Yeah, it works for me. I mean, we've already gone through – you know the entire sculpting system. The only difference is is showing how it works with the vertex cache. Yeah. But there's no point in sculpting if we can't save it out. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's that's what I'm saying. Okay. So. Fantastic. So, what do you think about this as well? Do you think we should continue just calling it um, session nine, or do we want to go to session ten as the pipeline? Um, because right now we've got 43 parts that make up session nine. I'd say we call this session nine because each session was supposed to be a discrete concept in of itself. Okay. And this is the editor. The editor is a discrete concept. Agreed. So then we look at the exporter, which is its own program in its own right. Right. It does its own stuff. It, literally, it is a whole new project that we will be creating okay. and going forward with. I like that idea. So we'll move that over to session 10 and uh, just keep on jamming. Okay? Uh, It works for me. Awesome. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you guys very much. And Lee, you did an awesome job. That is going to wrap up Session 9, and we will see you guys back in Session 10.